you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. The Iron Lady sings it. That makes it official. Welcome to Big Show. We certainly appreciate you guys coming by. Thanks for tuning in. As always, we appreciate you guys being on the part of the show. Refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss, YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Foss, Chris Foss, one on the TikTok, and you subscribe to the big LinkedIn newsletter in the 130,000 group. We announced this on the prior show this morning, and I'll make the announcement again. We changed the massive format of the show back in 2020 when COVID started because we wanted to open up to everybody. It used to be just mostly Silicon Valley tech CEOs and stuff like that, which it still kind of is considering who we have on today. A great <laughs> gentleman that I think you'll be excited to hear from. But we have we just put this out yesterday on the Facebookity. We pulled the numbers on how big our audience has grown since 2020, four years from yesterday, the February 5th, 2024. I should probably mention that people watch this show 10 years from now on YouTube. They're like, what? So over the last four years, we've increased the show 4, 1,405%. Not 100%, not 200%, 1,405%. How's that for fun? And we did, did it with your help. So we appreciate you guys taking a part in the show and not taking a part the show, but taking a part in the show and also referring to the show to your family, friends, and relatives. We have an amazing gentleman on the show. And we're going to be talking about something that's real topical. They they just launched those new Apple, I call them the Google Glass 2.0, because they used to have the Google Glass. But we'll get into it. So there you go. We have Sven Bruner on the show with us today. He is the co-founder and CEO of a company called Sphere, the enterprise standard for XR software. Sven's mission is to level up the way the world connects and works forever. Sphere revolutionized collaborations by harnessing the power of XR to amplify human capacity, enabling users to foster increased innovation, productivity, and inclusivity. Sphere has received over $10 million between two funding rounds and serves countless enterprise customers worldwide, including Volkswagen, Micron, Renault, and many more. Sphere is also proud to partner with industry leaders, including Qualcomm, Lenovo, Magic Leap, and AWS. As an entrepreneur at heart, Sven has always been inspired by the process of turning innovative ideas into real-world products and solutions. His guiding principle as a leader is go big or go home. He is passionate about fostering a culture of innovation and encouraging the team to take risks and embrace unconventional ways of thinking. Welcome to the show. How are you, Sven? Thank you very much, Chris. I'm great. Thanks for having me. And yeah, apologies. Yet another CEO from Silicon Valley, but I'll still try. I'll still try to make it entertaining. At least there you I'm go. from a different. At least I'm from a different country. That's that. There you go. Well, makes it a little bit better. We kept the Silicon Valley folks. We just added like authors and all from all walks of life. No, that's good. That's good. There, there needs to be more. It's, it, yeah. it can be pretty much of a can be a big bubble here. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, <laughs> talking about Silicon Valley stuff is. I mean, it's it's great stuff. It's innovative, but you know you gotta have a little diversity there. You know you gotta yeah. have a little Oreo cookie with the peanut butter <laughs> bread. I don't even know what that yeah. means. I just made that up. So welcome to the show. Give us your dot. Uh, your dot. Where, whatever dots you have, you want people to find you on the interwebs. Yeah, I mean, you, you already did a great, a great intro about about myself and the, and the company. So I appreciate that. That's already the, the the most important stuff is there. Maybe a little bit first about myself and a bit the the, the company. Um, as you said, I'm Sven. I'm the the CEO and co-founder of Sphere. Originally from Switzerland. Now I'm calling in from the San Francisco Bay Area. Live mm -hmm. now in Santa Clara, or have been for a few years. It's one of these exceptional days where it's actually raining here. It doesn't happen that often, but it, it does. And yeah, yeah, as you said, we're all about what we're passionate about is really this as we see it kind of new way to how you can interact with computers, right? That's mm -hmm. on a very fundamental way. I mean, you already mentioned, you know, Google Glass 2.0. That's it. That's an interesting one because I think Google Glass had a lot of people, that's kind of what they have in mind when you say, tell, or when you tell someone about augmented reality, they either Pokemon Go or Google Glass. That's usually the two things that <laughs> pop in pop in mind, right? And depending on what, who you ask, it's usually not a very positive experience, right? At, mm -hmm. at least when, when people, initially when they hear about these two things. 
So maybe I, I got to first start with kind of demystify that a little bit. The industry has come a long way. Um, mm. And maybe to, before we, we jump really, there's so many terminologies that have been thrown around, right? We had AR, which is augmented reality. We have VR, virtual reality, XR, extended reality, mixed reality. And then we had all metaverse and, and all these things. Which, in essence, there are, are there are differences between those, but I'm, I'm, you know, a lot of people use them interchangeably. When we talk about that, we really mean projecting digital content into the physical world. Like that's that's what what we really mean by by all of that. And and really, between you know Google Glass and what we have today is 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 a mind blowing difference, right? Google Glass, you have like a a tiny uh, bitsy heads up display in front of one of your eyes where you could project something on that little screen, and now mm -hmm. we have. You know, Apple likes to, to toss around new new fancy terms, but now we have a spatial computing device. We can really anchor content to the physical world. That's kind of that's what we're all about, right? We're we're a software company, so mm -hmm. we're, we don't have to do anything with hardware. We actually support a wide range of hardware, wow. including the new Apple one, but also things like you know the MetaQuest line, Magic Leap, Lenovo devices, Microsoft HoloLenses, and so on. And we're really the software layer for that. And and as you said, mm -hmm. we're super passionate about making work as we see it fun and and efficient again because i think a lot of people we, we felt it too you mentioned also pandemic right everything changed also how mm -hmm. we work and how we collaborate mm -hmm. and we've also seen as a lot of people still struggle you know we have now this i mean i think probably most of your listeners too they don't work five days a week in office anymore and neither do i neither does our company and that changed a lot right some people are in office some people are at home hybrid remote work and this is really the, the problem we're trying to tackle with our solution, right? With basically XR or AR collaboration, you have either a headset on or you can even use a phone and you can jump in into a, a virtual session. Again, you can pr project content into your physical world, interact with it and really work. Our pitch is always to people. You can work with your colleagues no matter where they are, even if and it feels like you're in the same room with them, right? Even if they're thousands of miles away, we have a super powerful avatar system that, that really... Kind of makes you feel you're talking to a person, not like a, a random lifeless puppet or something like that. So that's kind of what we're what we're all about. That's uh, definitely the message we want to bring to the people. I think the last before I stop my advertising rant is I think a lot of people don't realize that technology is really here already to facilitate that. I think there's still a bit this yeah. misconception that that's like ah oh, that's sci-fi. That's ten years out. In certain areas, it is right. Uh, we mm -hmm. also like from a consumer side, not really, but enterprise companies. Productivity, it's it's here. That's kind of the the, the last level I'll say in my in my opening statement. <laughs> there you go. So uh, a couple of different things there. I, I guess I should ask the most obvious question. People are always are probably asking right now with the launch of the new Apple headset or or Google Glass 2.0, I call it. But I know I, I I don't know what it's called. So I'll let you fill in. And I don't care to know what it's called at that point. <laughs> I'm not an Apple fan. I'm an Android person. But I mean, it's a great headset. It's going to change the world, just probably like iPhone did. The now you guys are software based. So you, do you, you guys plan on being available to run on that for people wondering? Yes, we are. We are. Actually, it's the device got launched last week, end of last week, and there's not that many, or it's pretty hard to get your hands on it. Uh, it's mm -hmm. actually called a Apple Vision Pro as a full name. It's a bit clunky. Yeah. Some people like call it AVP. All razor acronyms are already flying in. But yes, our solution is compatible with the Apple Vision Pro, and we'll support that device as well. It's, it's always been a core strategy for us. We we try to really be an open platform really? in the sense that we support again almost. Not, not. I mean, it's a every single one is a strong, a strong statement. It's not every single one, but most of the the, the relevant XR, be it VR, AR headsets, we we do support because we want to give people a choice because all these devices have different strengths, weaknesses, right? Same with smartphones. I mean, I think smartphones even are much closer now, or maybe it's a little bit. I know Samsung has a bit better cameras than iPhones or things like that. But in in the XR space, it's you. There's huge differences, right? Some devices are super expensive really high end some of them are a bit on the more affordable side mm -hmm. and for certain use cases that's totally fine right you don't need the let's say the ferrari if if you can also go with the, the honda sometimes right that that's totally yeah. fine that's we give the customers choice to go with okay for this use case i need the high end one for for this use case it's totally fine to go with something a little bit of more affordable there you go it's the i had a joke there oh yeah i've been i've been it is hard to get it them because they're like i think 35 30 something 100 bucks yeah i'm still trying to decide which left or right kidney i'm giving up for one. <laughs> so once i make that decision i'll put one on order i i sold all my kids already for the iphones so i'm out of kids yeah you're yeah. actually one of our employees just made a joke this morning on, in slack he's based in brazil <laughs> And I think they're they're selling it for seven thousand dollars. Oh. And he made the exact same joke. He said, "Yeah, 
yeah, I would, I would buy it, but I don't have a kidney left to give. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Brazil for you. The, I don't know what that means. So tell us a little bit about your background. How did you become an entrepreneur? Is this your first startup? Tell us about kind of your upbringing. What influenced you? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I had honestly a very sheltered upbringing back in Switzerland where I spent the first 29 years of my life and went through, I would say, a pretty traditional you know, school, school career. I went on then to college, studied computer science and, and business. And I think what always influenced me, I come from a entrepreneurial family. Like my, my, my parents have their own business. I mean, small businesses, right? Classical oh. small business owners. But my grandparents had their own business. And I think that always, actually, my parents never really understood. My dad was always like, hey, you've seen how much work it is. Why do you want to do it to yourself? You have a, you have a good degree. Just go work somewhere and make good money. <laughs> um, he, he never really understood. But for me, that, that it, was, it was really, I don't know. I was from, from growing up, you know, I, had, I still remember. It was always a funny anecdote. A lot of, you know, I don't know five, six-year-olds had their idols were like, I don't know. So I mean, Europe obviously soccer players. So we 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 were the football guys. We were we soccer guys, obviously, or celebrities or things like that. My big hero was uh, Bill Gates at the time. Oh, I wanted to be like Bill Gates because he he was. And I don't know. It always fascinated me this this entrepreneurial world. I think it was definitely influenced by seeing it. You know, my parents and grandparents being in that that field. So that was always something I had in mind that I I want to try at one point in my life. There and you go. towards the end of my college career, I was like. Because then you know how to start thinking about okay, what what am I going to do after college? Um, and that was right around the time when Microsoft back then announced that was in 2016 when they announced Hololens One. That was like the the that was a little bit after Google Glass, uh, but it was the first one that had this ability. It was super clunky device. It's it's it was also like 3,500 dollars and nowhere as good as the Apple Vision Pro is today. But mm -hmm. it already showed the potential of the technology, right? Oh, and yeah. I remember watching the live stream. They, they had, a, you know, one of these like big keynotes. They announced the device and showed it off. And I was like, wow, that's that. It blew me away. I just saw so many, because I've also been a lifelong sci fi fan. And that was for me like, hey, I could potentially combine my passion of sci fi technology with, you know, my profession, being a, a software engineer and my passion for entrepreneurship. And that was kind of the, the kickoff, I would say. I think that was the moment where I really said, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to try it. But yeah, it's definitely my first business, first time founder. Then yeah, I went on to found the company in Switzerland and then made a transition here into the U.S. a few years ago. And yeah, now I'm, now I'm here. There you go. So welcome to being here. And it sounds like you guys are on the right track. How long have you guys been working this company now? How long you mean? Or Yeah. Yeah. So I've... It depends a bit. I mean, we officially founded it in 2018, so that's like a six okay. years ago. Uh, oh. We kicked off the the development of the solution, or, or a little bit earlier, even like end of 2017. So I guess it's almost yeah, six six and a half years. It's been a while, yeah. It's actually yeah. crazy when you say it out loud. I didn't even realize it. It's not something I think <laughs> about on a daily basis, but when you get asked, it's oh yes, it's been a while. Yeah, it's funny you when you first start your company. Like every day is a slog, and you're like, oh god, it's giant thing we want to build and you know it's every day it goes takes forever and you're like oh if we can only get to the first year you know or two years you know and uh, then you wake up one day and you're like holy crap <laughs> this thing's been around for a long time <laughs> yeah it's yeah. Uh, anytime I tell people, yeah, the podcast is 15 years old. I'm like, I'm really tired right now. I need a nap. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I know what you mean. I feel you. I definitely feel you. <laughs> you're like, wow. I didn't realize there's a lot of crap that went into this, but that's the beauty of it. So now there's a lot of companies now that are using your guys' software. Tell us about some of the companies that are using your software and how they're applying it and utilizing it. Yeah. I would say one a very, I'd say that's also a very classical use case. I can name one of our biggest customers that use it in that way is Micron. Micron, for those of you mm -hmm. who don't know them, they're an American semiconductor company. Most likely in your laptop or computer or whatever, they have a, a memory chip by them in there. They, they're the, kind of the market leader worldwide in, in chip production for like memory chips for computers and laptops. And they use our software for basically remote, remote assistance. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine they have, it's a global company, right? They have engineering, their headquartered in Boise in Idaho here in the US, but they have manufacturing plants all around the world. They have mm -hmm. them in Singapore, Japan, Taiwan, uh, everywhere. And for them, like the real kicker was to, to really get into that was also COVID. Because from one day to the next, they were not really able to, to help each other out anymore because they would, for a lot of things, fly people in. Because these, we're talking about semiconductors, these machines are insanely complex, right? I mean, mm -hmm. don't ask me, I'm also not an expert, but they're, they're very, very complex machines. And 
in a lot of cases to retool them, to maintain them, or if there's a, an issue, you need to fix them. And sometimes you need to bring in a specialist, right? Maybe sometimes a specialist has to fly in from the US to, to Singapore or to, to Taiwan. And obviously that's costly, takes a lot of time, but you could also do it right before a pandemic. And then borders were shut, no travel anymore. And mm -hmm. they were like, now it's getting trickier. How do we provide support? <laughs> And that's when they start onboard our solutions. It's one of the premier cases we also, a lot of other companies use. And how it works in a typical scenario would be you're on the factory floor, right? And you need to keep in mind, this is a, an environment where you have potentially, you know, one of these Breaking Bad style suits on, you know, these, these hazard suits that it needs to be <laughs> sterile and everything. Oh, yeah, um, sterile and, rooms and, and stuff, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And you, you ideally want to be, you need to work, so you need your hands, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's not really an option to do something like a, a Zoom call or I don't know, have a phone in your hand. So what you can do now is a solution like ours. You put some glasses on, um, mm -hmm. you connect to the remote expert, as we call them, and they can be wherever in the world. Yeah. They basically see through the eyes of what you see on site, right? So mm -hmm. basically, let's say the example, you'll be the expert. I'm the, I'm the guy on, on site, on the, on the shop floor. I would stream my field of view, basically my eyes and, and ears to you. You see exactly what I see and you can also interact with my environment. So you wow. can send me, let's say, oh, check out this manual. You send me that manual, bam, it pops up in space, right? As a mm -hmm. three-dimensional object, the, the manual to, to help me with this procedure. Or mm -hmm. you can even live annotate into my field of view. You can say, oh, draw, I don't know. This, this screw needs to be loosened and you can draw, like annotate and I see it wow. spatially. So that's kind of a way to much, much faster. Again, it's within seconds. You don't you fly there. You always teleport yourself to that to that other employee, provide support, help them. You collaboratively solve an issue and you're out again and you haven't even left your office. So that's kind of the, uh, a use case we, we see a lot and provides a lot of value for a lot of customers out there. There you go. I know, I know a lot of companies are really struggling with trying to either claw back workers, get them to work back in the, in the office. They're running into a lot of rebellion from that. The, uh, sometimes it's not working well. People are like, yeah, we'll just go someplace else. And they, they kind of can with what's going on with the market today. And so it's, it sounds like your concept of, of being able to create, create these XR environments would be a solution to you know people who want to do hybrid or remote work and and keep that whole thing you know all the employees happy and all that good stuff absolutely and and you know when you think of it it's it's kind of crazy there's a huge discrepancy between let's say what management and executives want and what actually mm -hmm. the employees want right yeah i i can and i mean there's there's studies on that just for the top of my head there's numbers that somewhat 80 plus percent of managers and executives want employees back to office as much as possible. But I think over 65 or 66% of employees, if they had to be forced back to office full time, they would quit or consider mm -hmm. quitting. So there's a huge gap between those. And that's exactly what you just mentioned, right? That's something we try to address, that it doesn't really matter that much anymore in terms of where you are. So to, to basically have the best of both worlds, right? One, mm -hmm. if you come to office, and if you work in office, you can still comfortably work and collaborate with your colleagues there. But also you can embed everyone who's remote, right? And it's no one is, because what we usually see, even if you're in a Zoom or a Teams call, there's not kind of, it's almost, you know, the people who are on site, they're kind of, for them, it's great, right? They can, they can easily connect and collaborate. And the other ones are almost like second class citizens, right? They're like, they're on a screen, they're, it's really hard to, to communicate with them. They're, they feel left out. Yeah. And that's not ideal. And it's just the reality of things that I don't think we're ever going to go back to five days a week in office. I think this is even some people really try to push for it. But I think at, at max, there's a hybrid one. And I think that's actually also what I really like. I like sometimes also have to face to face with colleagues, see them going to office. But I also like the flexibility of sometimes being able to work from home. And I think that's how most yeah. people see it. I mean, there's always the extreme sides that want always in office and always remote. But I think a middle ground is probably healthy. But exactly for that middle ground, you need new technologies to help. And exactly what you said, that's where we're, where we're coming in or solutions like us, where you can really leverage our technology to have these virtual collaboration rooms or XR collaboration rooms and be able to, to work together no matter where we are, right? So basically, if you and me are in the same room, we can work together. If I have the third person that's at home, they can also be in that room and work and see the same thing. They have the same tools. They see the same digital content we place in the middle of the room, they can manipulate it, move it around. And again, we see them as an avatar, right? They're visualized. We, the cool thing is we synchronize a lot, right? We synchronize eye blinking, uh, mm -hmm. mouth movement, head movement, head movement. So it's really like you, you feel like you're talking to a person. It's not just like someone 
standing there. So you, you really feel you know, that the, the movement that you're doing is mimicked by your avatar. So you really feel, obviously, you hear them and you talk to them. You see where they're pointing to. So it's really like a form of remote presence a little bit. And also it's more engaging, right? You really feel more like, oh, I'm talking to my colleague and I'm working together with them because I can walk around freely, right? I'm not glued to my desk. And after the entire room is my real estate, right? I can have as many screens open as I want. I can have three-dimensional content. So it's a very freeing experience. And we just had last week a longer session internally where we use it for two or three hours, our own solution. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty magical experience when you when you really think about how far we've come. And also then for us, always a reminder of how much you can now achieve with this technology. And I think it's going to pretty much change a lot about how we collaborate, how we work in the enterprise for sure. Consumer is, I think, a bit further down the road, but I, I see or we see already like super strong interest and strong adoption, especially in, in enterprises. Oh, yeah, especially in hybrid or remote working, too. Yeah. Some of the things you guys have on your website, it decreases your carbon footprint so you don't have to, you know, f be flying yeah. executives all over the place. Exactly. Eliminate machine downtime, prevent disruptions with hands free XR guidance, remote assistance, increase employee motivation reduce error resolution times, sell more with unique presentations. That's the way to do it. I'll just put it, you know, sell, sell whatever I need to just here, put these glasses on and they'll mesmerize you into buying something. Accelerate time to market. <laughs> I imagine that uh, can cut down too. How do you find it increases employee motivation? So what we see is just an, a more engaging way to work, right? I think mm -hmm. we all know Zoom fatigue is very real, right? It's yeah. either being on a, on a call for hours and hours and you're glued <laughs> to your desk. It's it, it, it's a drag sometimes, right? Oh, yeah. Especially if, I mean, I know people that have eight, nine hours a day just in Zoom oh, calls, yeah. which which is which is tough, right? 12 and, over COVID, yeah. Or 12 was, over COVID, It was COVID, insane, right? man. It's, I had it, friends that were ready to jump on a cliff. Yeah, no, it's, it's real. It's, it's really, it's impacting your mental health in, in some scenarios even. And mm -hmm. I think being able to have, as I said before, it's a, it's a very freeing experience. It's, it's much yeah. more, you're not, you're not tied to your desk. You can, you can walk around. It's much more engaging. It's fun. That's always, obviously productivity is, is the key. That's the focus. But we also want to kind of bring fun, fun a little bit back to who likes meetings. Let's be honest, right? Everyone's like, a meeting is like, oh, <laughs> another meeting. You have to sit in there. It's boring. And we really see, and it's also measurable. It's, it's, people enjoy it more. It's really more fun to work. Obviously, there's also the novelty effect, right? You, It's something you've never done before. That obviously helps, right? Got to be honest mm -hmm. about that uh, because it's, it's cool. I mean, most people who, who even internally, but also people who try it, just like it's 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 a, it's a really fun experience. It's a cool experience to be able to do that in, in a, what really feels like a new way of interacting with content. But it's also more engaging. It's it's definitely something that we've seen. People talk more, people engage more. You feel like we're in the middle of the action, right? In a, yeah. in a call, you sometimes feel a bit like, you know, everyone's a bit in a, in, in a silo and there you're like in the middle of the action. I think that's kind of the, the change, how it helps motivate yeah. employees and, and make them more, more. Uh, it's just more fun to work. There with. you go. You're not just talking about something. Sometimes you'll have that XR building or yes. product or whatever it is you have before you. And so you actually kind of feel you're, you're working on the product in and of itself as opposed yes. to just somebody just barking at you from the front of the room. You know what they need for those Zoom meeting XR things for your guys' things is, uh, you know, that one guy who always who always asks the question after the whole meeting's done and you're like, oh, fine, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. And he's like, he goes, can you explain all that again? You know, that guy. Maybe you can have an XR thing where you can just go punch him. Pu punch him face. if it's just like a virtual punch. Yeah, that's virtual. A, virtual. I'll punch I'll, I'll, add it, I'll I'll bring it up with the product yeah, here or can, choking, you know, whatever. <laughs> just virtual. Not real life. Yeah, just we don't want to harm people. That or you can just cut off his mic and make it so he can't. Like we've had enough of you. We all know who that guy is. So. <laughs> Me, I'm me, I'm the guy who always raises his hand and I'm like, Are we done yet? And they're like, We just got here, Chris. And I'm like, Yeah, yeah but are we done yet? Yeah. And but I'm no, like, I mean, seriously, but it's like there is a lot of ways to time in meetings. I think we've all seen it, right? It's it's like sometimes meetings are held to be held. And it's it's we, we also, you know, we also don't really push for hey, use it when it's necessary. I'm also which sounds maybe a bit counterintuitive. I'm a big fan of face-to-face -face interaction and and being also physically with people, even though we sell a remote collaboration product but again i think it, it still adds a lot and that's also i think the, the nice thing about this technology is really it has kind of a human aspect to it in a sense that it gives you and maybe we're also going to talk about ai a little bit which is also a focus factor for us but we talk a lot about you know ai is a lot of people are afraid of it right it takes our jobs or it it you know ultimately or it's even dangerous right if it starts getting access to our nukes and then starts shooting these things around that's it's a lot of people are worried about these scenarios 
And I think AR or XR in general is, is never about replacing anything, any human element. It's just enhancing it. It's, it's supercharging you as a person, as an employee to do more, right? I take, uh, put these glasses on, I can do more. I'm more productive. I, it's fa I can better collaborate with my colleagues, but it's never about basically getting you out of the loop. And that's also what I really like because I'm, mm. I'm a fan also of, of, I'm not a big fan necessarily of technology pushing humans away. I think uh, being human is, is, is pretty, it's great. We should, we should actually make humans more productive. We should give them more tools, make it easier to, to do your job and, and not necessarily try to, to force replacement necessarily. Obviously some, some of it is inevitable, right? As technology mm. evolves. And we also don't have people, we don't ride horses anymore. There's a whole industry that died because of that. We switched to cars, but that's, you know, that's some, yeah. some of these things are inevitable, but again, that's, that's what really always fascinates me. And I really like about this technology. It's, it's, it's very human centered, right? We, we yeah. sometimes also make the, the, the analogy to, you know, something ultimately it's almost something like, you know, what, what you have in the, the Iron Man movies, right? Really like you have a visualization, a full co-pilot control center with you at all times. And uh, it's not about replacing Iron Man, but it's giving him this more superpowers. That's yeah. kind of the analogy a little bit, how we, we see our solution or the vision for it, how we want to support employees and people. And a lot of them actually also appreciate that because it, it's really about, they feel like, hey, I'm empowered. And that, that's a pretty satisfying thing for us too, to see that when people react that way. There you go. And evidently you guys support the widest range of devices that are out there. So all the different hardware reality yeah. providers, you guys don't do hardware, you do the software. Right. So it makes it so you can transpose yourself onto just about anything out there. Can you get on Google Glass? No, it's, it's not around. <laughs> no, that we well, don't support anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I don't think anybody supports that anymore. No. The, uh, do you have an anticipated date when you might come to the Apple device? Yeah, we're, we're, I mean, we, we already have a basic a private beta. So if, if okay. someone is interested, they can check it out. The wow. official launch will probably be closer to the end of the, the quarter where we like fully mm -hmm. go live and you can just, anyone can just download it. But we also want to stage it in, in intentionally because a lot of people is yeah. their first experience with a headset like that. We want to also make sure we get, we meet them where they are and, and keep them in the loop and, and, and can show them. Because for a lot of people, it can also be a bit overwhelming, right? The first time you have these thing, this thing on your head, you've never, you know, it's a different way to interact with it. There's no mouse, no keyboard. You have, it tracks your eyes, right? You, you pinch mm -hmm. to click and things like that. So there's a, there's a lot of differences. And then on top of that is our solution with a ton of features. And mm -hmm. you, you got to guide the user a little bit, especially the, the first time users. And a lot of them are now first time users with the Apple headset because it's traditional people who maybe weren't really interested in that space. And, you know, we all know Apple has a huge following and there's a lot of people who buy whatever Apple puts out. But I will say it's a good product, right? I, yeah. I, uh, I'm sometimes notorious internally in our company for, for sometimes bitching about Apple a bit, but <laughs> I, I have to say it's a good product. It's, it's a very good product. We're if all it gets cheap, excited. probably buy one. I won't buy it. <laughs> yeah. But I'll yeah, buy one I, of those. Well, with Apple products, I'm not sure if it's a, a good tactic to bet on whether they get cheap at all. Point. I think they always That's a expensive. good point. Yeah, they'll probably get more expensive. But just don't buy one in Brazil and you'll be fine. Unless you can sell a kidney. Yeah, it's probably good that you guys wait to get on board. Right now, I see people walking around streets with it and driving cars with it. Somebody got pulled over recently. And, you know, it's <laughs> they, I'm calling it the glass hole 2.0 era because that's what they used to call us back in the day, the glass holes. And I even talked to my friend, Robert Scoville, and I'm like, are you going to wear it in the shower so we can get that infamous round the world shower picture that you had with Google Glass? And he says, no. So I'm really disappointed, but I love him. The, I think he just learned from Sergey. Sergey was really not happy about the whole thing. But, you know, I, hey, it wasn't our fault. You know, Google kind of did that to themselves. They made it so yeah. expensive. And, you know, back then, people actually believed they still had privacy, even though <laughs> Zuckerberg was like, this privacy is dead. You know, everyone's like angry with them. And they're like, well, you, you just haven't caught up to what I know. And, you know, now no one seems to care, really, I guess. But you got to wait for you got to wait for Darwinism to clean out some of the first users, I think, yeah. and then you know because you don't want anybody getting hit by a bus. Or I'm surprised, you know, in San Francisco, you know, we're seeing some of the, the shoplifting stuff. I'm surprised someone hasn't run up to one of them and stole out there a gang hasn't run up and jumped some guy yet. But there's still time. Yeah, um, so be careful. <laughs> be careful out there if you're just walking around with a thirty-five hundred dollar headset. People in certain yeah, cities, I, like I wouldn't go to Oakland with it. Basically, no, at this point, yeah. Because um, you're I, probably I mean, going to get jumped. <laughs> yeah, I would discourage the use anyways outdoors in general. It's not really meant yeah. for that. Uh. But uh, no, I mean, you're right. a good point. That's also why a lot of the negative, you know, <laughs> I think in our industry has always been an issue a bit with negative perception, right? And, yeah. and as you said, 
they brought it on themselves, right? Google made, they marketed basically as spy classes, right? That was literally mm. the, the, the main use case to spy mm. people and invade their privacy, which no one is really hot on to, to be spied on. Same, we had a little bit of this whole metaverse discussion. I think we went to start a couple of years ago with that meta started, right? Everything mm. was the metaverse. And for a lot of people, it sounded very dystopian. This like, be, be, I still remember that line from the presentation when they presented their, I think when they announced the name change from Facebook to meta, and Mark Zuckerberg said something along the lines of, you can do this and this and that in our in our VR worlds. And then if you want to take a break, and then I expect him to say something, then go out and get fresh air. But he said, then you can teleport to your own private space in VR. And I was like, well, that's kind of, and I think for a lot of people felt all of it. I mean, it's not, the goal should be to live in that world forever. That's also how we see it. We see it, it's yeah. a tool to use to make it more powerful, but please still go on the weekend, go outside and enjoy the, 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 the nature world. Exactly. And I think... That sometimes our industry does itself a disservice by by sometimes going into these very dystopian places to yeah. where people feel like you know it's either Big Brother or it's like we we want to remove all human elements, all live in a virtual world, and, and that doesn't have to be right. It has a it's a it's a I think a truly positive technology if used the right mm -hmm. way. But yeah, there's always sometimes these companies who push it a little bit too far and go go off the rails. I think Google's problem was they made it too elite. You couldn't buy it. You it was yeah. only available to the chosen few influencers, mm. and that I think that made it people resent it. You know, at least with Apple, people can buy it. You know, if you have sell a kidney, but yeah, it's like even no matter how much money you had, if you 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 weren't one of the chosen few by Google. Yeah, and I think that's where they really went wrong. It really created elitism, and that's why people hated the Google assholes, is because they're like, yeah. oh, you're better than us, and Oh, yeah, yeah. We're like, no, we're just, we just smell good. <laughs> now you're using it in several different industries, manufacturing, healthcare, and pharmaceutical defense and office teams. We kind of talked about office teams. How do you see it impacting what you're doing with your guys' software with healthcare and pharmaceutical and not only what's being done now, but maybe the future? Yeah. Healthcare is a, is a really interesting one. And I always have to be careful how I talk about it because sometimes I call it my favorite use case, but it's, I don't mean it in a way it's good that this use case exists, but it's good that we can help. So let me explain a little bit. So we, we, we have an ongoing project. That's one use case we have in healthcare to basically fight the violence against children. Mm. And how we do that is we part with a hospital group in Germany, uh, mm. the hospital clinic Heidelberg, and it's a, a network of hospitals, but the center is in, in Heidelberg is a, a very specialized hospital, right? A lot of low specialists there and they're responsible for a radius of several hundred miles around Heidelberg to basically serve these local communities, local doctors with specialized health. Hmm. Now, what happens, and, and this is where it gets to the, the child abuse cases, is that's one of the most sensitive calls you can make, whether a child is being abused or not. We, oh, yeah. Let's say a child comes to you as a local doctor, it can be in the middle of the night, and they have bruises, right? Mm -hmm. Is it being abused or is it just, it fell, right? Children also play and they, they fall, right? And you want to make the right call. You don't want to send back a child to parents that abuse it, but you always, you also don't want to accuse parents of child abuse if there's nothing there, right? So it's a very sensitive call. And what would have happened in the past is basically that specialist doctor would have to, even if it's in the middle of the night, get into the car, drive, could be three, four hours, what? assess that patient in that case, make that call and go back because it's too sensitive because the, I also didn't know that, but apparently this is, you can see depending on the, the, you know, the, the injuries, which one it is, but you need a lot of specialized knowledge. It's not something that even like a, a regular local doctor cannot do that. Mm -hmm. And that was always very painful for everyone involved, right? It's, yeah. it's one, it's costly, just your costs. It's also a factor. You have to drive there hours that this doctor cannot spend on other things. It's also very inconvenient for everyone involved, not just the doctor, but also the patient, right? Parents, child, they need to wait for hours until this is over. It's a very stressful time for everyone. And that's mm -hmm. kind of where we started. So it goes a little bit into the tele, telehealth, telemedicine. Well, sector, there you but basically then local doctor, again, similar concept, right? That time it's not a machine, it's a human being. Put the glasses on and stream their field of view to the, the person, basically the, the specialist doctor in the hospital clinic. And mm -hmm. they examine the patient together wow. and you know they see that they can collaborate together they can it's much less invasive and they can do it in 20 minutes what would have taken an entire night right which frees up both doctors makes it easier for a child for the parents and and they can they can move on a lot a lot quicker and i think that's also why i say it's one of my favorite use cases really again a prime example of 
really a good use of technology to make things better, right? It's not mm -hmm. hurting anyone, doesn't take anyone's job away. It's just making everyone's life easier and better. That's why I really like the use case. Again, it's obviously still horrible that in, in 2023, 2024, we still have so many cases and actually they spiked during the pandemic. Unfortunately, it's, it's, it's a pretty uh, almost an epidemic of, of now both like domestic violence, child abuse, and, but it's good that there's now also more tools to, to help and combat all of that. There you go. There you go. Somebody's writing in our comments. Is that the CEO of the Vegas event venue? <laughs> no, it's not. No, no. It's fun. It's funny. We get, it's actually really helpful. So first of all, we had the name first, just to, just to, uh, <laughs> to put it out there. Sounds like a we lawsuit. C and D you guys. Exactly. Well, that. the thing is we get a lot of free attention, especially like on social media, you know, yeah, people you tech go. sphere. And sometimes uh -huh. they mean the Las Vegas sphere, and then we get the free, the free traffic. But if someone is listening from the Las Vegas sphere, we would definitely be open for a collaboration. It could be, it could be an interesting fit. Um, yeah. I haven't been in there yet, but I, when I was at CES a few weeks ago, I, I saw it from the outside. Pretty impressive. It's, uh, there you go. it's, it's really cool. But no, we're not affiliated in, in yeah. any way. Yeah, we're talking about XR company that does software for XR, sphere.tech, folks. So look it up if you're mid show and you're just jumping in. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe what you should do is make it so that people can have those, you know, whatever headphones at home that work with your software, and then they can be in the sphere in, in Las exactly. Vegas and watch you too or something, you know, you too. Exactly. Right? I'm just not sure if the sphere guys, the other sphere guys, will yeah, like you might that have to. then you don't, you don't buy tickets anymore or, or they yeah. would have to charge quite a bit of it. But <laughs> yeah, there might be a, because they could sell the tickets for the people who want to be Yeah, there. like virtual tickets. Yeah. And then you're cheaper, also selling yeah. tickets. It's just kind of, you know, what Bill Gates did where, you know, he licensed the, the windows. Yeah. You, you, you have 5 million people watching that thing. But yeah, I can see what's going on. Yeah. I mean, well, look, we're, guys, we're open to it. We're not the bottleneck. So if, <laughs> if the sphere guys want to reach out, we're, we're here. Yeah. We'll just get all the spheres together there. Exactly. You know, get stuff. all the spheres together. Yeah. 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 So what have we touched on that we should tease out to people about who you guys are, what you do? Tell us if you've been on board with you guys. I noticed there's a book, a demo on your website. Yeah. There's resources, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. Yeah. So we definitely encourage, I think, you know, a lot of people are skeptical still about this. Is it, is it really beneficial? A lot of people are like, ah, do I want to be in headset? And what we really encourage people is that try. It's really, it's something you need to experience. It's also like probably a lot of people who are listening now, what is this guy talking about? I, I, it's hard to imagine. And it is, but I definitely encourage everyone check out our website and a few videos. It really helps to to, because it's a visual thing, right? It's a very visual thing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we have a, a way to also, you know, you can reach out to us, website, book a demo. We either, if you have, ideally you have a device, right? You can just, we can guide you how to download it, right? It's very easy and check the, the solution out. We have now, we just introduced that end of last year, beginning this year, a free tier, meaning that there's a, a limited feature set you can just check out yourself, right? You don't even have to pay a license upfront. You oh, wow. just go in and try and a lot of the features are actually available you can use collaboration this like, you can call in people and things like that the restriction is more you can't do you can't bring in your own content you can only use the stock content we have there but there's stuff to play with some fun like models and rockets and spaceships you can you can play with just to get a feeling of what you can do with the solution you can even hmm. do it multi-user and so on so that's also a good way to kind of experience it as a, as a first time so it's downloading the app and for those people who are familiar with these headsets, you know, they have all these, they have app stores too, similar to uh, Android and iOS have app stores, right? Our app is there, download it, check it out there. And if you want to know more, feel free to reach out to the website and book a demo. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the best way to experience it. And then it, we take it from there, right? Depending on what the people are interested in and what they want to want to see. We also get more and more traction from research institutes, universities that are interested for educational purposes, right? And mm -hmm. that's also something that we get a lot of influx interest. So every education adjacent folks that are listening in here is, could also be interesting for, for you. Again, similar issue, right? When we talk about engaging people in the, the business world, same is true for in the, in the training world or the, the mm -hmm. education world to make sure it's, it's students are, are interested. They have a, a way to, and it's, it's much more engaging. Also, if you have three dimensional content, you can work with rather oh, than like yeah. text or just a textbook. I would, at least when I think back of my, me being a student back then, I would I'd definitely have appreciated that. Boy, I feel ripped off, man. I <laughs> stuff in school. Yeah, we're too, we're too old. We're too My old. God, if I would have had some of this stuff, I would have given a shit about school. <laughs> I would have been a whole lot different student, especially when you can see like real world applications yeah. in front of you. Of, yeah, because then like, they feed you math and you're just like, what, do I, what is this going to do? 
Yeah. Like, I don't give a shit. And, you know, where you could, where you could see, okay, well, here's how you use math to, I don't know, engineer a building. And, you know, you can see the app, you can see the visual thing. And I'm kind of visual. I'm tactile too. Or if you show me something, I, I can do it. But, but still, you know, just seeing a bigger picture or the yeah. picture of what you're working on in visualization and, and of course, geez, that would have made school a whole lot more funner. I mean, yeah. it really would have. So I'm jealous. They shouldn't do that to school people. They should make them deal with chalk and pencils. Yeah, like I had to yeah. deal. Screw those kids. But no, I can see how this could be used for corporate training too, or yeah. leadership training, or yeah. any sort of training, or maybe coaching. You know, being able to advance things. You know, one of the problems that we I think we talked about this last week on one of the shows. One of the problems you have in schools is people learn sometimes at different speeds, and so being able to individualize learning and training through these through these these glasses and XR, VR, AR, you could, yeah, you know, you could go at your own speed. And so then you're yeah. not being held back. And the other thing too is it would make it funner to collaborate. So, you know, when you're sitting in 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 a classroom and, you know, you got some teacher barking at you, which is, you know, probably the teachers you and I were used to when we grew up, you know, threatening physical violence if you don't listen, you know, that sort of stuff. <laughs> it was still legal evidently back in those days. I, I, had, a, I had one teacher, I had a couple of teachers who actually had, they had paddle belts or paddle oh, paddle wow. boards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I think by the time I hit high school, they weren't allowed to hit students with them, but they smacked the desks. Okay. And but they would have like holes drilled through them. There's like real a lot of violence and stuff back then. But yeah, I mean, some of us really needed it actually. Looking back, <laughs> but you know where where you could instead of having some bark at you uh, trying to teach you something being able to collaborate with everyone in the classroom where you're all wearing the glasses and you're all like, I don't know, building something or something that would just be so much fun and, and yeah. more community communal sort of experience of learning rather than, you know, and then you could, then you could not have to go to the zoo. I remember we went to the zoo on a field trip one day <laughs> and half the class got shit on them from the monkeys throwing the shit. <laughs> And yeah, we could exactly. just skip that whole experience and just kind of watch a, a nice placid version without getting all that. Wait, going without on, without so. monkey poop. No, but yeah. you're, you're spot on, right? I mean, it's, it's, and you touched on a few interesting things. I think one is the learning speed. Yes, everyone has a different speed, but also you also mentioned, right? Some people learn better visually by, when I say visually, I mean like plat, you know, they see it in three dimensions and things like mm-hmm. that. Because we, I think, for the longest time, you know, it was all, it was textbooks, right? That was the, de- the, the default. Maybe if you were, I mean, I hope, I hope it changes, but for us, it was like <laughs> every once in a while a video, which was already a big deal. Oh, we're going to see a video about, about something. Yeah. That's great. But it's, it's not for everyone, right? A lot of people, and that doesn't mean they're not, they're not smart enough. It's just they learn mm-hmm. differently, right? It's, it's yeah. easier for them to learn with their eyes or their ears rather than just read something to, to perceive it or experience it. And I think there's a lot of potential benefits to, to that. And I think, I also think a lot, what we see a lot is, is you know, math, if you want to teach math, it's probably going to involve some textbooks. I mean, there's math yeah. formulas, right? There's no way around that. But if you teach, for example, like also then traits, right? We see that a lot. If you if you, if you you train someone who's going to be an airplane technician or a helicopter technician, right? I mean, training them on a textbook is, is, is probably not the greatest, right? You probably need some, you know, basics, foundational, but then you need to learn on the job, right? Mm-hmm. And with tools like ours, you can do that, right? You can do it with the helicopter. You can then add additional stuff around that helicopter, right? Cue or, or like clues, what you need to do or instructions, right? They can self-learn again mm-hmm. at their time, right? But in a much more visual way. Or even if you don't have, if you don't have that helicopter, right? Not everyone has a helicopter laying around or at all times, right? You can even pre- practice at home, right? You can go through these procedures and so on. So it's, it's a much more engaging way, but also a more practical way in, in, in many ways, if, especially if it lends itself well to you know you mentioned architecture right and all these things where where you have a visual component to it it's so much easier to conceptualize to learn to to understand what's going on and also that the collaborative effect right you can do it to four or five people at the same time you're not isolated and even students from home right you do your homework together collaboratively right you can both be in a session you have it there you can work on it together without having to do you know, you're, you're just a boring homework and you have to sit on your desk and write it down. I think there's, there's a lot of potential that to also really improve and make school more engaging. I, I, I think, you know, in fairness, in my time, probably also your time, there were not that many things available yet that could have created a better school experience. But I think now it's almost like, a, yeah, it's kind of a prime if you don't do it. Because there is ways to make it way more engaging, get people much more interested. And I think that's 
will probably help with you know retention of students. You have less dropouts and things like that. I think this this could really. I mean, obviously, it's not the old saving grace, right? It's not the silver bullet, but I think it can play a, a big role in it. Definitely. You know, they they talk about AI and and how it's pretty much going to take over everything. And so, a lot of discussions we have are, well, what's the role of human beings? You know, and why is it going to keep us around <laughs> once it takes over? And and you know, we talk about how it's our creative things as human beings, our ability to create, our ability to feel, and and that's really gonna still be our edge no matter how good maybe ai gets unless it learns to feel i don't know but it seems like this sort of thing can kind of ensure that you know we're able to kind of have that edge of being able to create at a whole new level that we never were able to before yeah exactly and you know i i see ai i think you know as we said before some sort of replacement is probably inevitable right there is probably gonna but i think that always happens right jobs evolve or certain jobs go away but new jobs are created or job types Mm -hmm. i think that always has happened over the last thousands of years that's human human advancement but i think Mm -hmm. with ai i think the big change is it's probably faster than than a lot of these other ones Mm -hmm. and um but how we see it also and it's also how we integrate it we use it more as like your your assistant. It's really more AI helps you to do more. So mm. we're currently pushing or, or doing a big push in integrating AI into our product. But again, not to replace the human, but to enhance their experience. To give you an example, right? Let's say I made this example with you have a problem, there's a machine, you need to fix it or something like that. And at the moment, let's say, you know, let's say you maybe don't even know which manual applies or what, what needs to be done, right? Mm-hmm. And something you can do with AI that we're working on, especially if you have glasses on, you look at that part and you just ask your, your AI assistant, like, hey, I think this part is broken. Can you pull up all the relevant manuals for this specific part or all the, mm-hmm. the maintenance history for that specific part, right? And then mm-hmm. it automatically, you know, similar like ChatGPT, you can ask it what, I don't know, some some random question It pulls it from the internet. It's going to be then pulled from your actual corporate data, right, where it's relevant for you because obviously... Micron or or large companies, they don't have their manuals in the open internet. So it's not something that's available, but how we approach it now, that's something they can, the data can, or the the models can be trained on that data, right? The internal corporate data, Mm -hmm. and they can use and leverage that then in a solution like ours without having to worry about being exposed to the open internet or something like that. But again, this feeds in back to, it just makes you more, 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 or gives you more power to do your job better, more efficient, right? It's never meant to replace you because in the end, I also believe there is certain tasks that, you know, we humans will have an edge for quite a while. And and I think also, you know, we hopefully, I mean, we'll see what happens if they crack general artificial intelligence, what will happen then, what we'll, we'll see if that's ever going to happen or if it's maybe happened already or is imminent, we'll, we'll see. But I still think humans will always have a place for, for uh, especially as you also shared in, in creativity and collaborativeness. And I think that's also something we... We want the need as humans. Oh, I yeah. think that that won't that won't go away. I think certain things will be replaced or enhanced, but we we look at it from a again, we're in a core XR company. AI for us is a tool to use that makes the experience better. That's kind of how we perceive it and see it. And for there it has tremendous value, right? It really has big, big value that it can really enhance your your experience. It can make you way more productive. Right? It feels very magical sometimes when you can talk to your device and it performs actions for you very quickly. It feels very powerful, almost magical, right? But again, it's always, you're still there, right? You're, you're in command, right? You're in charge as a human and the AI, the machine is there to support and help you. That's kind of how we see it. And I, I think if we embrace that paradigm, we don't really have to be afraid of AI so much. We yeah. can, we can. I think we should have guardrails. It shouldn't be like, it should, you know, we let it run loose and let it do whatever it wants if it then it gets at that point where it has a will potentially even i think that needs to be we need to be careful about that but if we embrace that and really see hey human is it's ai is there to serve us humans in a way to whatever it is right like, you know medicine obviously to just detect that's not something we have anything to do with right but there's there's so many positive applications of it and we just need to have enough guardrails i think for the quote-unquote dangerous ones but there's, I, I, I look at it, I mean, I'm also a technology optimist, right? I'm, I'm usually seeing the positive side of technology, uh, but I also fully understand people who see the, the dangers and the, the potential negative aspects of, especially, for example, something like AI. There you go. There you go. So tell people again how they can onboard with you, reach out to you, and, and talk to you about being a fit. Yeah, so I mean, the best way is check out our website. It's sphere.tech. So sphere, just as you, as you spell it, normal spelling, dot tech, T-E-C-H. Our website there, you will find all the links. We have a ton of case studies also if you're interested. A few things we mentioned today, 
These are case studies online. You can also check out, see if that fits for your case too. There's a contact form where you can reach out to either request a demo, request more information about the product. You can also check out our socials. We are pretty active on LinkedIn. We have a YouTube channel. Just search for Sphere Tech or Sphere XR on these channels and you'll you'll find us. And yeah, get direct in touch with us. We, we always make sure to try to get back to you within 24 hours after someone reaches out. But yeah, I would say website, website socials are, are the best way to, to get in touch with us. We're obviously also at shows here and there, especially like industry shows. If you are there, say hi and, and love to give you a demo. But yeah, that's kind of the easiest and best way to, to get in touch with us. There you go. There you go. Well, thank you very much for coming on, Sven. We really appreciate it, man. This has been really fun and insightful. Thank you. For I have me. hope for the future. And then, and, then, <laughs> Good. and then maybe I'll also hope that you can work at that whole sphere thing when Vegas and you guys can. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Hope, I, I hope so too. It will be cool. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Things about it. Oh, give us the dot tech, I guess. You may have already given that up, but let's give it again just for final purposes. The sphere.tech. 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 Yeah. Check it out, folks. Watch for it coming to a, a Google Glass 2.0, Apple, whatever the hell they're called this week. Glasses. The I think they're calling them the Steve Jobs glasses. No, <laughs> I guess I guess he didn't really build them. So no, he had nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to call him the who's the new guy? Tim the, Cook. The the, Tim the Cook. Cook glasses. The glasses yeah. for cooking. There you go. So thanks for honest for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, forward Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com, forward Chris Foss. Subscribe to the big LinkedIn newsletter, the big 130,000 group over there. All the different places we are on the interwebs. Chris Foss, one at the TikTokity. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you guys next time. There you go.